Encapsulation means that the properties of an object are only directly accessible for that object itself. In practice this means that we'll need private access to the fields, so they cannot be accessed from outside the class, and public methods for getting and modifying the values. Why would you want to do this? I mean, if you have private fields but still public methods to change it and to retrieve the value, what's the added benefit? Well, for starters, your data cannot be unexpectedly modified from outside the class. And that's a good thing. It adds security to our application. It is optional to add a setter, so you, you can leave it to the class whether you want to be able to modify the value or not. And then there's the option to validate before modifying. If the control is within the class, the class can see whether the value is actually suitable for the field, and if not, the class can discard the suggested setting of a certain value. So this way the class is in control of its own data, and also the functionality to change or to get the data has to be implemented in one place only, namely the class itself. This makes our application better structured, and it leads to less unpredictable behavior. Let's have a look at one of our classes to see what this looks like in practice. So here we have our bird class of last week. As you can see, the properties of these bird class, they're public, while well, most of them are. So this is not well encapsulated. Let's start with making all of these private. There we go. But what if you want to set the name from the bird from outside or change the colors or change the sound the birds make from outside? This is not possible right now. What we need are getters and setters. I'm going to write one by hand and the others I will generate. So let's start with the getter. They are public, so let's start with public. And since we are getting something, we need to return the value. So I'm going to start with uh, uh, feathers. Well, the type of feather is a feather array. So we need to return a feather array. And by default, all getters are called get, and then the name of the variable starting with a capital, since we are using camel case. In order to get it, we don't need to send in an object. And all we'll do is we'll return the feathers. We have access to the feathers inside this class because they're private. And with this, we have kind of created a public interface to retrieve the feathers of our bird. Let's have a look at the setter. So when we're going to set something, we don't need to return anything. So the return type will be void. And the name by default is set, and then again, feathers with a capital F. This time we do need to send some input, namely what we want the feathers to be. We are setting the value, so we need to tell Java to what we are setting it. Well, what's the type of whatever we are setting? It's a feather array. By default, the name is actually the same here as it is on top. So it's feathers here and it's feathers there. This is a bit weird because how will Java know what feathers I'm setting? Well, what I'm writing here, it doesn't make sense. Um, it doesn't make sense for two reasons, no. So it doesn't make sense because this time I'm setting my input parameter to my input parameter. That's no use. So how am I going to refer to this feathers? Well, I already said it. I do this with the keyword this. By saying this feathers, I'm referring to the class instance. So as you can see here, it's getting purple and when I stand it, it's highlighting it. So it's recognizing this feathers as its own feathers and the other one as the input parameter. Since we are inside this method, feathers input parameter is defined closer than feathers um, up here. So this is why to me it makes sense that this one doesn't require an extra keyword, but this one does. So this is how you write a getter and a setter by hand. Let's be lazy right now and either hit on your Windows Alt insert or right click and say generates getter and setter and then select the ones you want to generate getters and setters for and hit OK. And as you can see, since I was uh, sticking to the conventions, it might as well have been generated. So you can see here I've created a public a string get name to get the name, which is also of type string, and returning the name of the class. And then here you can see that the setter is following the same convention. So it's sending in a string, which is a type of name, with the same name, so there we go again, this.name equals name. And it's the same for colors and for sound. So this is how you encapsulate a class well. You make the properties private, 
and to give it a public interface to access and modify the variables if that's what you want.